Hello everyone, Bonnie here. I hope that you are having a wonderful start to the new year. Well, Spellbinders is just have a look at this gorgeous 3D embossing folder of the month for January. What a beauty. I'm going to be doing some simple watercoloring and I'm going to do it on black watercolor paper. There's a lot of dimension with this folder and I don't want the paper to crack. Before the watercolor paper was inserted in the folder, both sides were spritzed with water. And there you go, you can see the watermarks on the panel. I'll be painting the raised images with watercolor paints with mica by Iul. When working on black watercolor paper, you really do want to have a medium that is going to give fairly good coverage. Ordinary watercolors didn't give me the opacity that I was looking for, but there are some other options out there. You could work with either acrylic paints or gouache. Those mediums will give a fairly flat finish. I love the shine of the mica, so I went with the mica watercolors. I'll be starting off by painting all of the foliage in this pretty shimmery green. I find that these paints do need to be softened up, so I use an eyedropper and put a drop of water and let it sit for about a minute. I'm going to be using three different sizes of watercolor brushes. For those big images, I'll be using the number 10. Everything else will be painted with a number 6. A liner brush, a number 1, is used for the teeny tiny leaves and, of course, the vines. Because this panel is mostly foliage, once that is complete, there's just some pops of color to put on there. So there may look like there's a lot going on here, but the painting goes very quickly. Those flower petals are really tiny and they take no time at all to paint. The pretty shimmery pink is a good choice in my opinion for these delicate flowers. Here's a tip, quality of water brushes does make a difference. A good watercolor brush will hold water, so that is why you don't see me dipping into the water or paint often. The brushes that I'm working with today are Kazan, K-A-Z-A-N, but there are lots of good quality brushes to choose out there. Definitely cost a little more, but in this case, you get what you pay for. And if looked after, they will last forever. And really, the care of your watercolor brushes is quite minimal. Simply making sure that they are clean after use and not letting them sit in water. There's a couple of blooms on here that look like thistles. And the top I've painted pink and I'm adding in this pretty bronzy color to the base of it. And I'm just loving this color so much that I was trying to figure out where else can I add it in my panel. And so I've decided to do all of the centers of the flowers in it. The flower centers consist of a number of small raised areas. I want to make sure that when I'm applying the paint, it is thick enough that it will not go in between these areas. Now, I really haven't changed up the thickness of the paint that I'm applying to the centers as opposed to the rest of the painting. But the flower centers are a good demonstration of how thick it needs to be to maintain the detail. And I just couldn't resist this gorgeous, vibrant, shimmery red. All of the larger flowers have been completed with this. And because there's just a handful of these flowers, they offer a nice focal point for this floral panel. Particularly for the larger images, I find it best to outline at least a part of it and then fill it in with color. Painting an entire background does take time, but this is easy painting. Because the mica paints are going on opaque, there's no fussing with highlighting or shadow areas. I painted this background in two different sessions, first focusing on getting all of the foliage done and then going in and doing the flowers. 
but I have to say it was not the length of time that stopped me from painting after the first session because once you start seeing this come to life by adding more and more color, it just pushes you on. The combination of the shine from the mica paint with the contrast from the black watercolor paper and the ease of painting makes creating a background like this very pleasurable. Just finishing up with some yellow paint on those two smaller flowers and I'll also dot it on the center of those little dainty florals. And this card is finished up simply with a sentiment from Everyday Sentiments, which has been die cut from both black sheet foam and gold foil. After the sentiment has been stacked, the panel was cut down to four inches by five and a quarter inches and adhered to an A2 size card base. But before mounting the sentiment, I want to make sure that I have good contact between the embossed panel and the card base and pop my misty on it to give it some weight while it dries. And that completes this dramatic birthday card featuring Spellbinder's 3D embossing folder of the month, Efflorescent Flora. Hope you enjoyed this video and as always, I appreciate your visit.